This is Twit. A responsible security researcher going by the handle Delsploit, who reportedly answers email at delsploit at gmail.com, has privately and responsibly disclosed their discovery of a terminally serious stack buffer overflow vulnerability across D-Link's past VPN routers. I characterize this as being terminally serious because this now known to exist vulnerability allows unauthenticated users, also frequently referred to as anyone anywhere, to remotely and at their whim execute their remote code on the victim's targeted D-Link VPN router. The concerns are that D-Link's announcement of this sobering reality last Monday contains a field for link to public disclosure, which is currently filled in with the abbreviation TBD as in to be determined, which strongly suggests that this Delsploit character is being responsible with his or her knowledge and is giving D-Link some time to respond. But there's a problem with that. All six of these venerable and vulnerable D-Link VPN routers have gone well past their end of life. They're no longer being supported by D-Link and thus will not now and not ever be receiving updates to correct this most critical vulnerability. No CVS tracking designation will be assigned to track this vulnerability because it's never going to be fixed. And if a CVS were to be assigned, it would be carrying a flashing red CVSS score of 9.8, perhaps, or maybe even the rarest of 10.0s. Okay, now, this vulnerability is as bad as they come because this otherwise lovely family of routers offers a standard SSL VPN, which runs a simple web server at the standard HTTPS port 443. I have a screenshot in the show notes of what you get when you, when you use your HTTP browser to connect to this thing's port 443. It looks like a web page asking you for your username and password. From the standpoint of almost actively soliciting attackers, this could not be any worse. The page that's displayed to any device connecting to port 443 of an, of an affected router prominently displays the device's model number, and both the hardware and firmware version numbers. This thing effectively shouts, please exploit me. So, you know, where they are on the internet will never be any mystery. And I have no doubts that the lists of their IP addresses have long ago been assembled. Okay, so now everyone knows the situation. The two oldest affected routers are the DSR500N and the 1000N, which both went end of life nine years ago, back in September of 2015. The more recent four VPN routers are the DSR150, 150N, 250, and 250N. All four of those went end of life just a few months back in May of this year. But as the saying goes, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, meaning in this case that end of life is end of life and that D-Link formally states in their disclosure that these now known to be seriously vulnerable D-Link VPN routers will never receive updates. Longtime listeners of this podcast know what will come next. As sure as the sun rises every morning, Many tens of thousands of these devices are currently sitting on the public internet. Number may be around 60,000, 60,000. I haven't seen an exact count, but I'm sure that either Shodan or Census would have that number and be able to provide their IP addresses. Since every one of them, as I said, proudly presents its logon page 
to any passerby. There's been no public disclosure of the details of the vulnerability that Delsploit found, but D-Link has confirmed it. And at some point, Delsploit is going to want to have their day in the sun and bragging rights about having discovered this vulnerability, so it's going to be published. And no one can really fault Delsploit for eventually disclosing the vulnerability they discovered, because that's the way the game is played these days. You wait long enough to give the impacted parties a reasonable amount of time to respond, and after that, no matter whether or not they have, and regardless of the consequences, the entire hacking elite is then informed of exactly how to bypass the internet-facing authentication, which protects tens of thousands of networks that are currently behind every one of these VPN routers. There's nothing any of us can do other than protect ourselves and those we have responsibility for and care for. So make absolutely double damn certain that nowhere within your spheres of influence do any of this six D-Link VPN routers currently exist because we all know exactly what's going to happen next. In their disclosure, D-Link ineffectually recommended that this hardware should be replaced. We know that most of the owners of these devices will never receive any sort of notice of this and probably wouldn't pay it the attention it deserves even if they did. We're all being so inundated by all of our software being constantly updated that it's easy to become numb to it. But if anyone is in the market for a replacement, I would now stay I, I would now say to stay well clear of D-Link. They have a long and still growing history of very serious remotely exploitable vulnerabilities being discovered after the fact in their past end of life products. This happened earlier this month with 66,000 of D-Link's internet connected NAS devices. Their response was effectively well, we're sorry, we don't make NASAs any longer. And even if we did, those 66,000 internet-connected, remotely exploitable, network-attached storage devices we once made are now past their end of life, so it wouldn't matter even if we still made them. It's true that hardware is not forever and that it would not be unreasonable to expect an aging NAS or router that's past its end of life to be rotated out of service in favor of something new. But we all, now, we all know that that doesn't happen often. Given their track record, I would be disinclined to give D-Link any more commercial support. If you really like the brand, okay, you know, I get it. It is truly nice looking hardware, but you should be aware that end of life or end of support probably means end of secure service life, after which point a device, a D-Link device should be rotated out of service. And if you have any existing inventory of D-Link devices, you should be very certain to have a current subscription to their security bulletins and other notifications and really pay attention when you get one. It's too bad. This used to be a good company, right? I mean, I had a lot of D-Link routers I did too. in my day, right? I did too. But, you know, they're having problems. And, I mean, again, it's not, it's not unreasonable to say – Okay, well, it's it's end it's of old life. and we're not going to support it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, all the other companies do that too. But e but even Microsoft has gone back and like fixed a really bad Windows yeah. 7 problem after Windows was end of life because they recognized they didn't want to hurt their own users. The problem really is that D-Link was a consumer dominant consumer brand for a long time. And so there are a lot of people who aren't that sophisticated who have D-Link gear and they're not right. paying attention. They don't listen to this show. And right. so uh, they'll never know that there's a problem with their router or actually it's not a router. It's a, it was a NAS. Uh, well, uh, it, it is a, a, an S uh, yeah, it, it, it is a, uh, the, the earlier this month, it was 66,000 NASs. And now we've got five, um, 
uh, we have six different <laughs> models of right. of SSL VPN routers. Routers. And okay. so an right. SSL VPN router is sitting there listening for incoming SSL connections right. on port 443. Right. So I, I mark my words, a month or two from now, we will have a count of how many systems have just been taken over. Yeah. As a I mean, at least an SSL router is not a consumer product. That's not no. not in grandma's hands. Well, I, actually, I don't know. I would say that's a bigger problem because it means that it's hooked to yeah. a more valuable network. Yeah, something it's you're trying to granny's, protect. It's not yeah. on granny's land. Right. You know, it's on, uh, you know, s some, some small businesses network that can be, you know, have all their systems encrypted and then held for ransom. Yeah, some IT guy 12 years ago installed it in a lawyer's office, and nobody's thinking about it. It just works, and security is not a concern. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast, or just click one of the links below. Security Now.